Hello my sweet shabby loving friends, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. Each week I share kinda shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. Now this week the Christmas crafting goodness continues. We are going to be having some fun with fabrics. We're also going to be using some items that you probably already have around the house. So gather up mason jar lids, some empty spice jars, and some salt and pepper shakers. We are also going to be using Hippo water slide decal and iron-on transfer papers to create some beautiful decor as well. So there is a lot of fun in store today, so let's get these projects started. For our first DIY, I am going to be turning these little salt shakers into cute little tassel ornaments. You are going to need an assorted amount of fabric that's going to coordinate with colors in your salt shaker. Then I've got some laces and some ribbons over here. We're also going to be using some wire in order to create a hanger and to attach our tassel at the bottom. So the first thing in order is to actually make our tassel. We're going to do a seven inch long tassel, so that means I need to cut all of my pieces 14 inches long. So I'm just gonna cut a couple of pieces of my trim here. I'm gonna cut a couple of pieces of, ooh, good thing I have more of this. This ribbon is actually pretty thick, so I'm going to be cutting it, and I'm just gonna be cutting along those lines right there, right along that black line of the pattern, just to make it a little smaller. And I've just been snipping and ripping various coordinating fabric into 14 inch long by about a half inch wide strip. So I just make my snip and rip it. And then once you've snipped and ripped, you need to make sure that you remove all of that excess string because there's a bunch of it. And I'm cutting six strips per fabric. I like a big, thick, fluffy tassel. So now that we have all of our pieces snipped and ripped and our ribbon cut to size, it's time to start making our tassel. And we're just going to take our pieces of fabric and just start stacking them on top of each other, just like this. And make sure that if you have pieces, for instance, this fabric, it's single-sided, so make sure that the right side of the fabric facing up and they're gonna want to start to fall as you keep stacking them, and that's okay. So I'm just gonna keep stacking these up, and then we'll come back, tie it up, and get it added to our salt shaker. So now that I have everything stacked, I'm going to pull it up and fold it in half. Isn't that cute? I have another piece here that I'm just going to use to tie it all off very tightly. When we get that right there with Mr. Claus, look how cute that's gonna be. First, we're going to remove the stopper from the bottom of our shaker. Next, you're gonna need some wire. I'm not gonna cut the wire just yet as I want to ascertain how long I need it to be. Definitely would rather have it too long than too short. This particular brand of wire has a built-in wire cutter on it. So all you do is take it over to this section here, pull it up there, and when you snap it, it cuts that wire right in half for you. So I'm gonna fold the wire in half, and you've got your holes there, and that's what we're gonna to use to insert our wire. Now before we do that, we want to make a hanger. So you're going to squeeze it to make a loop, and twist it, and it's gonna make a nice little loop for us. So we've got a loop. And now we're gonna feed these two ends here into two of the holes of our salt shaker. There we go. So we have our loop at the top. We have this coming through here, and that's what we're going to use to attach our tassel. Find your center. And now that you've found your center, you're going to lay that across there, and you're going to very tightly wrap these wires around each other. And before you snip that, you wanna check your work. And then we're going to snip off the excess wire. Then I like to take the tip and just roll that under 
so I don't have the possibility of poking myself with all of that. That's adorable. I forgot to show you that I glued on a tiny bow and a little bit of bling on that little bow there just to finish off our little Santa and then of course I put a hanger in there. And now we're going to apply this tassel to our little nutcracker. However, we're going to do this a little differently. So I begin with a very small fine ribbon that is going to fit in the holes of my salt shaker. I want to make sure that I'm going to have plenty of ribbon at the bottom to tie on my tassel. And I also want to have plenty at the top to make the hanger. First thing that you're going to do, knot it a couple of inches down from the top. And that is going to be your hanger. Now I have two buttons. Thread through the ends of my ribbon through the button. And now we're going to do the same thing with the larger button. And that's what we have. Now we're going to tie another knot at the bottom of this. Now you'll take these ribbons and thread them through the holes in the top of your shaker. I've got the tweezers here that I'm going to use to grab those ribbons and bring those on through. So we're just going to tie our tassel on. We're going to find the center, lay my tassel in there, and tie it as tightly as I can. And there we go with our little nutcracker. Aren't these just the cutest little things? I hope you guys try a few of these. For our next project, we're going to be taking our empty spice jars and we're going to be making snow globes. We do need holes in the lids, and so this is what I have done. I found a piece of scrap wood in the garage. I laid my lid down. I put my nail down and centered it up as best I could. And then I just tapped it through until I formed a hole. So now that we have our holes here, we're going to go ahead and get started with creating our little snow globes. I have an assortment of little bottle brush trees here, but I think this one here is going to fit perfectly into that jar. And I purchased these at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to cut the top of that off because I don't need this as an ornament. Just going to start by dispensing glue into the bottom. Push my tree in there and use my tweezers to move it around to get it to stand upright. And there that is. Take some fake snow. These are the little beads and then this is the pretty little iridescent flakes. I'm just going to put that into the bottom as well. Just like that. Isn't it cute? Now all we have to do is make our loop and decorate the top. I'm going to follow the same process to insert these two into these jars as well. Those are so cute. And now we're just going to decorate the tops. I have taken a piece of scrapbooking paper, my one and a half inch hole punch, to punch out these cute little circles. Then used Aline's tacky glue and applied it to the top. Dip my brush in and brush it on. Get a nice even coat all over that surface. And center it up, push it down, and let it sit. So we need to put a hole back through the paper so we can get our hanger on there. I took a skewer and very carefully made a punch through that. Then I went back through the hole and pulling it through. So to finish it off, this is the look that we're going for. I started with a piece of ribbon. I want it a little longer than what I actually need. And I'm going to be using some little pearls, a large needle with a large eye. Now this is too thick for both pieces to go through at the same time. 
So this is what I've had to do. I put my ribbon through that eye like that and I pull it through. Then I take my bead and I put it on there. So right now that's what it looks like. Then I re-thread it and take my needle through my pearl and back through the lid. Grab that loop and we're going to pull this ribbon through. So that's going to give us our hanger. Let's go ahead and pull our bead down here. And we're going to put another pearl on the bottom here so our loop does not pull through. It'd be nice if all of this would fit through at the same time. The hole in that is just way too little. It wouldn't go through. So we've got a pearl on either side and I'm going to pull this because that's about as long as I want my hanger to be. So now I can just turn this over and tie a knot so this ribbon won't come back through this pearl. Now we're going to clip our threads and screw that onto the bottle. Then I'm going to take more pom-pom trim and we're just going to glue it around the top. And you want to work in small sections when you're trying to glue things to metal like this. And pull that and squeeze that together. I think those turned out really, really cute. Now it's on to our next project. Now we're going to do some quick and easy iron-on transfers with a hippo transfer paper. And this one does say for dark fabrics, but I was practicing with some light fabrics and it works just as fine. You will have the instructions on the back telling you how you need to set up your printer. Each printer is different, so you'll just follow these instructions for how you need to set up the paper type and the paper size in your printer. Then you just print off the images that you like. This one is from the Graphics Fairy, and I just thought this one was beautiful. So we are going to be ironing this one onto a flower sack cloth. Now, once you have printed this out, you do need to make sure that ink is thoroughly dry. Now, the next thing that you're going to do is to trim around all of the excess of the image that you are not going to need on your graphic. And you can see that's what I'm doing so far. Now to apply it to your fabric, you are going to want to have your iron set between wool and cotton, no steam. You're also going to be using this piece of parchment paper that is included in your package with your transfer papers. You're going to carefully roll and remove your image from that backing paper. You're going to place your image where you want it on your fabric and cover your design with your parchment paper. Start my timer. We want it to be for two minutes. Iron that down. I think it may make it easier to work with if I unfold it. I peel back your parchment paper and that's all there is to it. Look how cute that turned out. So let me set this aside and we'll get our ornaments done. Now we're going to be taking these cute little images here. I'm going to be ironing them onto some fabric scraps that I have and we're going to be using our mason jar lids to create ornaments and we're going to cut around the outside of our images here. And I just think that one's adorable. My mother-in-law drives a VW and she's just the cutest little thing driving around in her little bug. So now that we've cut around all of our images, we're going to do the same thing. Roll back and peel off our image, being careful not to tear your transfer. I'm going to center it on my fabric, put my parchment paper over the top, start my timer, and press. Now we're going to remove the paper and that's one image for us. And it really is just as easy as print, trim, peel, and press. That is how easy this is to use. 
So now we're going to put our fabric into our mason jar rings and we're going to decorate those to make some really cute ornaments. I actually like to put my fabric over the top of it that way. So when you put your fabric in there, you've got that nice side that you're going to look at on your tree. I've put my fabric in there and just moved my fabric around and that looks good to me right there. So I'm going to turn it over this way and I'm going to hold it with one hand and take my quick grip. So we're going to glue this into our lid because these things are notorious for coming apart. And your quick grip isn't like hot glue so I can go around the entire ring and not worry about that glue drying. Place it back over the top then just press and hold until it sets. Just go all around there pressing that in here and then while that glue is still setting up we'll go ahead and get the next ones done. Now this one is a wide mouth jar because this image was a little bigger than these others so you can see there's the difference here. I'm going to center it up, move my fabric around until I get my image where I want it. Take my quick grip and put it inside my ring. We're going to press and hold. Go all around your ring to glue that in place. So I'm just going to take some scissors and trim off the excess fabric. Now we're going to go ahead and gather up some cute little things here and we're going to start decorating the outside just to jazz it up a little bit and kick it up a notch. I took pieces of this beautiful gorgeous floral that I picked up from Hobby Lobby and I just trimmed some pieces off and glued a little seed pearl on there. I glued some ribbon to the top and also carried it on around to the back and up underneath just so that's not going to come off and put a little pom-pom. Same thing with those cute little wintry florals and a seed pearl. And now we'll go ahead and we'll put our lace on. And this is a nine inch piece of lace. So I've got it glued like that. I'm going to continue gluing these pieces down around here and to the back just making sure that our hanger is not going to come off. And I'm going to glue another piece of this in here so it'll look like that. For this little cutie, I'm going to take some of just this piece of greenery, clip off some of these longer pieces here at the bottom. So I'm just going to layer in some more of these little greenery pieces until it looks right to me. Now I've got these little red pom-poms that I think will also look like berries. I'm just going to place a few of those in there. We're going to put our hanger on and I just took some jute twine and I've tied a knot here and I'm going to glue the knot to the top. And we're going to do the same thing and glue down our ends. And there's our cute little car. Isn't that adorable? These are so cute. Well, I'm going to get this cleaned up and we are going to move on to our next project. Now we're moving on to using our Hippo Water Slide decal paper. And you get 20 sheets in here. And you can see I've printed off quite a variety of images. And these came from the Hungry JPEG. And then the rest of these came from Graphics Fairy. I then go into Canva and resize them for whatever project I am going to be working on. Once you have printed your images out, you want to make sure that your ink is nice and dry. Then you will be taking a clear acrylic spray and you will be spraying your projects. You want to put three coats on letting each coat dry in between. Once you have applied your final coat of your clear coat, that you let that thoroughly dry as well. Now just as we did with our iron-ons, we're going to do the same things with our water slides by cutting out around our design. And you want to leave about an eighth of an inch around your design. So now that we have everything trimmed up, it's time to start applying our decals. And you will want a bowl of water and you'll also need a paper towel to make sure that you are going to be able to dry that image. You are going to take your image and you're going to put it in the water. Now when you put it in the water, it's going to immediately curl up, but it will straighten out. 
and you can see it curls up and I'm going to take my fingers and gently open the image and you're going to let your image soak for about 30 to 60 seconds. So while that's soaking, I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to moisten my coffee mug because it makes it easier for your decal to be positioned when your decal is wet and also when the object that you are working on has a little bit of water on it as well. It's probably going to be hard to see, but as I am pulling on this, you can see it is coming down off of the back of that paper. So that is when you're going to lay your image down. And as you hold with one thumb and you lift off with the other, look how pretty that is. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. As long as that surface is wet, I can easily move to place my design. Now I will take my paper towel and I'm just going to dab the excess away start in the middle and just tap that out releasing the moisture from behind our decal as we're doing that look how easy that was we're going to set this aside to dry and we're going to put this on a couple of other projects as well next i'm going to be applying this decal to this beautiful amber jar we're going to put our decal into our water and we're going to let that soak for about a minute moisten the area that I want to work with. When you put your fingers on it and try to slide it, if it doesn't move, you need to soak it for a few more seconds. Okay, let's try it again. Just like that. That is not going to show up. Let me grab something else. So you can immediately go to plan B. Let me moisten this. There we go. We're going to hold it down with one and Pull that up. Oh my word. Start in the middle with our paper towel and we're just going to work that excess water out. So we did learn that it looks better on a lighter background. The color just really doesn't show up on a darker background. So now we're going to try and see if it sticks to this candle wax. And we're also going to see if these water slide decals will stick to these round wood slice ornaments. Pop that in, I'm gonna roll up, I'm gonna unroll it, I'm gonna let that soak for about a minute. So while it's soaking, take my fingers, moisten the wax. You can see when I slide with my fingers, it wants to slide off. Oh my goodness, it worked! And I can see that there are some bubbles underneath here. That means I need to take my paper towel and just gently press, not too hard. And I want to work those bubbles out. I think I like that one the best. How pretty is that? Now we're going to see if we can get these little babies to stick to our wood slice ornaments. So let's try our Christmas tree first. I used the Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory. I did put some of the Rust-Oleum clear coat on that too. I don't know if it's going to work to put water on this wood ornament or not. I'm still going to do it. I think I need to place it exactly where I want it because I don't think it's going to slide like the glass does. Pull that up. We'll see if it dries if it's going to stick. I don't know. So we're going to set these aside. And once these dry, we'll come back and get some hangers on them. But I can't believe it actually stuck to the wood like that. Those are so cute.
you so much for stopping by today. I am wishing a happy Thanksgiving from my family to yours. Links to the Hippo water slide decal and iron-on transfer paper will be in the description box. I do hope that you found this video just full of Christmas crafting fun. Come back next week for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until then, my sweet friends, be blessed.